name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. You know, you really should take the time to enter some of those competitions and contests that they talk about on TV or on the radio. You sometimes think that your chances of winning those contests are slim to none, but you just never know. Yesterday, one of our students, Stephen Kovic, approached me in the hallway with a larger-than-usual smile on his face. He told me that he had just won a contest and that he was going to be one of the many lucky Canadians that would get to carry the Olympic torch in its run across Canada. Soon the Olympic uh, flame will be lit. It's lit in Athens in Greece and then via satellite or it's sent uh, across and it lights uh, a torch here in Canada. The torch will run from coast to coast and sometime in December Stephen will get to carry the torch when it is in the Hamilton Burlington area. He'll run for a few hundred meters and then pass the torch along. Eventually it will light the beautiful Olympic torch in the Olympic Village in British Columbia in 2010. Now you know the torch burning flame makes me think about our faith makes me think a little bit about our virtues program. If you've opened your student agenda, you'll see that next to the name of every month in your student agenda, there's a word. In September, if you look in the agenda, that word is faith. I hope that our faith is burning like that Olympic torch that will be carried across Canada. You see, our faith guides us. It should guide us in everything we do. Our faith should influence the way we think and the way we act. For example, we know from our faith and the stories of our faith, stories found in the Bible, that God is very concerned about the poor and the needy. That's a fact of our faith. In fact, God and Jesus, they have a preferential option for the poor. With that in mind, having the idea in our faith that God loves us all, we should be guided to act always in the interests of the poor. We have an opportunity right now to help out with the Thanksgiving food drive. If your faith is burning, maybe it's not burning as brightly as it was when you were confirmed, maybe it's a little dimmer than that, I would ask you to please if there's a burning flame of love in your heart, think about bringing in some food, non-perishable canned goods, craft dinner, peanut butter, even toothpaste, toothbrushes, a bar of soap, whatever you can spare at home. Maybe give till it hurts, uh, sacrifice a little bit at home to help those in need. The St. Dominic, St. Vincent de Paul Society have asked us to help and start helping as soon as possible. There's such an urgent need in our school community area. So please, let's give till it hurts. Think of the poor. Be guided by our faith. I would also ask you to uh, keep in your heart today. Maybe the flame of faith will get you. If you are musically inclined, if you love to sing, if you play a musical instrument, whether it be a stringed instrument, the flute, the saxophone, you name it, please, the M&Ms will meet tonight after school in the music room. If you need some more information, see Mr. Penkel. You can see Miss Laxton, Miss Scazzaro, Miss Pereira. We'd love to see you come out. Even Finney will be there trying to sing. I would ask you now to please join with me in asking Mother Mary, our mother, Jesus' mother, pray with us and for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Paul, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great day, Saint Paul.
Good morning to the St. Paul community. Uh, this morning I wanted to take this opportunity to use it to talk about a few things that are happening inside and outside the school. Today is the first during the school year. Today is our first Civvies Day. And that's the first Civvies Day for a number of students, but it's old hat to a number of students that have been at St. Paul's for a year, two, three, or four. So what you need to do is listen very closely. We made a policy change last year, and that is in the agenda book. So I understand that people will be forgetful, but with respect to hats, that's not part of the civvies, okay? So hats are off in the hallway and in the classes, and I would ask you to abide by that and make sure that I don't see anybody in the hallways with their hats on. So leave the hats in the lockers. Good, that's out of the way. Number two, and more importantly, tomorrow night, that is Thursday night at seven o'clock, we have an open house for our grade nine parents and students. And we would encourage as many parents and students to come out to our open house, meet our teachers and department heads, find out about the programs, find out about the many, many activities that students are getting involved in already at St. Paul's as you begin your career here. Thirdly, if you haven't already noticed it, uh, I guess it was Albert Einstein that said the definition of insanity is doing the same thing with negative results over and over again and expecting a different result. We have traffic problems on Cothra. Therefore, we need to think outside the box because walking in at 824, 825, because you run into the same traffic every day is not thinking outside the box. So I would encourage parents and students to make sure, like Mr. Schmidt, you find an alternate route, whether that's down to the lakeshore, over to Dixie, or whatever makes sense, to avoid the Cothra problems in the morning would be a very, very big help. Lastly, it's a very, very important time in the conditions that we're facing in the world. I think anybody who has opened a newspaper or watched the news will recognize that today Barack Obama, the President of the United States, will be speaking at the United Nations. And he will have the complete attention of the entire world for what he will probably describe as the most significant issue that is facing all of mankind. That is the challenge of global warming and related challenges that include things such as our depletion of oil and other natural resources. Now in Copenhagen in December, the world's governments are going to meet to make some serious decisions, hopefully, about what we can do in our own respective countries to lower our carbon footprint. So I would encourage everyone, please, to make sure you make some time over the next 24 hours to stay very much in tune with what world leaders are saying, including the leadership in our own country in Canada, with respect to what we might be able to do, because this particular issue is going to be with us very intensely in schools for a long time to come. I'm going to leave my announcements this morning to that encourage you to have a fantastic day. We'll be coming up with a news report